So then folks, I thought it'd be worthwhile me to run through what I've actually been doing over the last few weeks fishing wise. I've, actually, I've been fishing some really big matches, golden reel qualifiers, maven match list qualifiers, big money events. Um, so winner take all matches generally. And with mixed results, I've been taking the GoPro out and filming a bit of footage on the bank and it's been tough. As, as a lot of you know, the weather hasn't been great. We've had really, really cold weather and as you can see now, we're in blistering sunshine, but only the last two or three days has, it, has this happened. So let's talk to you about last weekend. I've been going to Larford Lakes over the last few weeks. I've thought to myself, I've just cherry, just cherry pick a couple of venues, try and learn the, about those two, two or three venues. And in my mind, I've chose Larford and the Glebe. There's loads of big money events now. I don't have to go chasing an individual event and I can actually go to a one or two venues and try and learn about that venue. So. Larford it is, and on Saturday I went there to fish the feeder um, championship. The winner of each 10 peg section goes through to a big final in October where there's some decent money to be won. So I love feeder fishing, it makes perfect sense for me to go to Larford and have, and have a go. I actually drew on the day a peg I wasn't too happy with, peg eight on the Speci, on the Speci Lake, middle of the Burbank, it's not been producing brilliantly uh, recently. Peg four is the end peg and they've been catching quite a few carp off that, that peg. So I fully expected that area to qualify. So at the start, I had two lines, decided to feed a line at 15 meters. Remember it's feeder only, so a lot of bait at 15 meters. So I used a big baiting up feeder and a fed a line of, um, with five big feeder falls of bait, micro pellets, bit, a tiny bit of corn. With a view to catching on that line a little bit later, if the fish were feeding quite aggressively, I can drop on that line and catch a big weight of fish but I felt and I always felt that my main line especially for the start the start of the match and the middle periods of the match was going to be at 35 meters so I had two rods clipped up and also two different tactics for those those areas of swim a small hybrid feeder and also a little tiny cage with a more standard hook length sort of like 10 inches long catch a lot of skimmers fishing that way I didn't feed the longer line at the start steady away started on that hoping for a quick response and actually it was probably like 35 minutes before i had my first fish a nice skimmer hopefully signs of, you know signs of things to come and then as the day went on i started to put a few fish in my net a couple of fish long and then i quickly realized that the pattern was to catch two fish and then move swims if you catch a third fish you were eking the peg out a bit too much it wasn't that sort of day where you could just bag up on one line um, so I'd catch a fish long, catch a couple of fish long, then I'd move short, catch a couple of fish. And middle of the match, I was absolutely flying, winning the section comfortably. I think I had 14 skimmers, really, you know, really, really good. And probably next best in the section was six or seven fish. So as you can see, I was, I was absolutely flying. And then I made a fatal mistake. I refed the shorter line. I could feel the peg drifting away from me anyway, but I refed the shorter line with a bit more bait and it just killed my peg totally. And I ended up only catching two skimmers in the last two hours. I trickled my way through to 25 pound. I always felt I was behind in the last hour, so I spent a lot of time fishing for a carp as well, which never materialized. And as it was, 30 pound won the section and I had 25 pound. Um, the important thing I think to mention is the two chaps, Jamie Harrison and Martin Elman, both really good feeder anglers, as, as you might know but they had a lot of space, the chap in between them, them two didn't turn up and I felt that a lot of the fish, especially later on in the day, sort of settled in that sort of safe, safe zone and they were able to catch fish for a little bit longer. Um, but as I say, the, the, they've been doing fantastic there anyway, so they probably would have caught that weight wherever, they, wherever they'd have sat. So a little bit disappointing, a couple of tactical areas, wasn't quite on my game. Um, time to go back to the drawing board and I had the Glebe, uh, Glebe um, Golden Reel qualifier the next day on the Sunday. I actually went roller skating the night before so I didn't do any practice. Ages since I've been roller skating, took my lad um, for his first time and um, I was quite surprised how good I was but that's a side story. Went to the, went to the Glebe, I drew peg 22, Glebe 1, peg 22. Anyone that knows the Glebe knows that it's a fantastic fishery, there's loads of fish to be caught and the the tactics are usually all based around carp fishing it's a really a, a, it's generally a big weight venue 
All the talk was about the early numbers on Glebe 1, pegs 1, 2, 3, 4. And actually last year, this time last year, I won the qualifier for the Maver match this off peg 2. So you can tell that there's a lot of fish in those early pegs. Mark Griffiths made no mistake whatsoever when he drew peg 1. He was standing in front of him in the queue. He told me what peg he wanted and he actually went and drew it. So fair play to Mark. And he had £270 to win the match, which is a brilliant weight when, fish, when you're fishing a waggler. Because obviously you miss a few bites, you're striking, reeling back in. It, it's time consuming. You know, playing your fish isn't, isn't as speedy as on a pole as well. So he's done brilliant to catch that weight. My peg was peg 22. Now, I'd say loads of you know the Glebe, know that that, when the weather's warm, as it is today, is a brilliant feeder peg. It's shallower than the rest of the, um, the pegs on that lake. You can cast and you can you cast on a really nice plateau and I've had some big weights off, off that there before. The day was freezing cold, it couldn't have been worse conditions and in actual fact I caught very, I got, caught very few carp, well no carp whatsoever on a feeder. My general approach on any commercial, especially in the water that's a little bit cooler, is to just feel my way into the session. So start of the session, fed a bit of bait short and then nowhere else in the peg and I started short. What I'm trying to do is catch those two or three early mug fish that are still milling around short for maybe some bait from the day before or they haven't worked out as a match yet. Catch those fish and then work my way out into the peg and I could sense it was going to be a hard day as well down our end of the lake. Fortunately I caught a carp, then I caught a skimmer, soft pellets feeding, feeding a few four mil um, hard pellets, um, soft pellets on the hook and then work my way out into the swim. What I didn't want to do is cast a feeder out straight the way. Okay, I might catch a couple of fish, but what generally happens is you spook a lot of your fish and they go sideways and you never ever get them back. And of course, you're really in a feeder over the top of any fish that are between you and the far bank. So then I went long, 16 meters, and pinging a few pellets again, hard pellets, six mils this time, with a view to hopefully catching a few carp, Unfortunately, one carp. I saw a caught at 16 metres and I fished that line on and off throughout the day. You know, I really put a, a lot of time and effort into that. So, for the last couple of hours, I spent my time on the feeder. Quickly worked out there was no chance of me catching any carp, so I've scaled down, um, scaled down my lines, ended up using a side um, 16 hook, quite a fine 16 hook as well, 014 hook length, and a small cage feeder. And instead of fishing your three and four, dead maggots on the hook like I would be for carp and ramming that cage feeder full of particles. I put a little bit of ground bait in there, the F1 sweet ground bait from Dynamite, the F1 sweet pellets which I used um, on the day as well, the micros. Those soaked up, two maggots on the hook and end up catching some really nice skimmers. And I just ticked over for the second half of the match. Unfortunately, that was enough to win the section. Um, I had 33 pounds. 30, 30 pound was second. You could tell how hard our end of the lake fish because the other section was one with 30 pound, which is unheard of at the Glebe. But again, well done Mark Griffiths, he did fantastic. I collected my money and then took my lad, who had a fantastic weekend, roller skating on the Saturday, then he went to the arcade fire at the NEC on the Sunday night. And family time's important, you've got to mix it. It was a brilliant weekend. This weekend we've got Feeder Masters um, Super League. It's a Ferry Meadows, mega looking forward to it. Our team is me, Steve, Jeff Ringer, Adam Wakelin, obviously fantastic anglers. We've been putting a bit of time in and I hope you all wish us a bit of luck. Right folks, so here's the feeder rig that's served me so well over, over the last few years to be fair and the one that I used all weekend at Larford and also the Glebe. So, really simple rig to tie. If it wasn't simple then, you know, I'd struggle to tie it to be fair. I'm all about putting as little on the line as possible. So the only thing that goes on is a little link, snap link there. Slide that up the main line. Let me just talk to you about the main line as well. I use some, a really robust main line. I don't want to worry about it snapping. And also the fact that it's slightly thicker than normal helps you know alleviate any tangles. I'm using this stuff at the minute, it's 10 pound, 025 really nice sinks really well it's the mtech stuff from midair suits me down to the ground obviously if i was chucking a long way i'd probably use a thinner line and a shock leader but for anything up to like 40 meters that's great right next thing to do once you slid that slap link on your lines tie your twizzled loop i know a lot of people struggle with this twizzled loop but again if it was difficult i wouldn't be able to do it it's simply a case pinching the line between your both hands and twist it rolling the line 
And what you're actually doing is you're rolling the line together. So you're rolling the line between your finger and thumb. Now, if I was fishing with longer hook lengths and bigger feeders with maybe a, a longer drop on that, that link, I'd have a nice long twisted loop. But because I'm only using short hook lengths over the weekend, fishing for fishing, you know, 20 inch at the Glebe is the, is the rule there, and that's the maximum I fish, 10 inch at Larford. I want a nice, short, stiff boom. So once I've got about three inches of twizzled line, I just tie a double overhand knot. Again, it's not the strongest knot in the world, but it's a nice little neat knot. And at the end of the day, 10 pound line that I'm using, I could probably tie any knot that I wanted in that and it wouldn't break. Tie that down, pull it nice and tight, and then just bite it nice and tight. Obviously, if your teeth can hack 10 pound line, mine are struggling as the years go on, but nip that little tag off. And then, again, really simple, no beads, nothing, nothing fancy. I'm just using these slot shots. It's, imp it's important to use a square edge sort of shot style, shot style weight because that helps kick the boom away once you've got get a bit of weight on it. I put two on the main line, slide them down to the twizzled loop. So you can see, slide them down to the twizzled loop. And then, let's grab a bomb for you, show you. And then, when you put weight on, you can see straight away that that boom is being kicked away from the weight. It means I get no tangles when I chuck out. I can be confident that my rig is actually fishing. And that means I can think about other things like feeding, swim rotation, when to top up, all those other things. It makes total sense for me. A really simple rig, fed me well over the last few years.